Flight 93 was a United Airlines Boeing 757, registered under the tail number N591UA. It had 182 seats, but was only carrying 37 passengers. With all the parts that a 757 has, almost the whole aircraft just disappeared into this crater upon impact. Saeed Al Ghamdi, a Saudi Airlines pilot, was identified by the FBI as a hijacker of Flight 93, which crashed in Pennsylvania. Al Ghamdi was shocked and furious to learn that three days after the attack, noting that his name, place of residence, date of birth and occupation match those described by the FBI. You cannot imagine what it is like to be described as a terrorist and a dead man when you are innocent and alive, said Al Ghamdi, who considered legal action against the FBI. In reality, when it crashed, um, there was only about a 30-foot uh, crater in the ground and debris was scattered over a five-mile radius. When planes crash, they don't leave debris over a mile radius. This plane had to have been shot down. If we go back to Operation Northwoods, it is a 1962 plan to um, create fake terrorist attacks. This is a government plan declassified by the Freedom of Information Act. Anyone who does not believe the fact that the U.S. government would do this sort of thing to its own citizens to provide a pretext for war needs to take a look at Operation Northwoods. Operation Northwoods was a 1962 plan to generate U.S. public support for military action against the Cuban government of Fidel Castro. This plan was masterminded by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Lyman Lewis Limitzer. Operation Northwoods called for a war in which many patriotic Americans and innocent Cubans would die senseless deaths, all to satisfy the egos of the twisted generals back in Washington, safe in their taxpayer-financed homes and limousines. Operation Northwoods eventually made its way up to John F. Kennedy. He rejected the plan, and we all know what happened to him a few months later. A large percent of people believe that Saddam Hussein was involved with 9-11, but the President of the United States admitted himself that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. It's, it's, it's pretty funny because George Bush himself admitted that Iraq had nothing to do with the attacks of September 11th. They were... What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing! But the country was invaded anyway, and there's still an ongoing war there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he came straight out and he, he admitted that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11, and Iraq didn't have anything to do with 9-11. The invasion of Iraq is not justified by anything. Iraq was not involved with 9-11, but the country was completely leveled by U.S. troops. In fact, the war in Iraq is completely 110% illegal. Wounded, another Iraqi rides on the ground. The Marines kill him. Then cheer. Man, these guys are dead now, you know. But it was it was a good feeling. And afterwards, you're like, like, hell yeah, that was awesome. Let's let's do it again.
The Project for a New American Century is a neoconservative think tank that promotes an ideology of total U.S. world domination through the use of force. The group embraces an ideology of faith and force, U.S. supremacy, and rejection of the rule of law in international affairs. Its members include Jeb Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld. The paper they wrote, titled Rebuilding America's Defenses, talked about the fact that a catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor would strengthen the American military because lawmakers would, given the urgency, green light funds to continue the military's dominance over U.S. adversaries. The PNAC way of thinking has been implemented almost to the book since 9-11. And here is that agenda, the military mission statement of a right-wing think tank, the Project for the New American Century. Written a year before 9-11, it's supported by key members of the current Bush administration. The drafting was supervised by uh, Cheney, uh, by Donald Rumsfeld, by Paul Wolfowitz, by Jeb Bush, who's the president's younger brother, and by Lewis Libby, who's Cheney's chief of staff. This is about control over Middle East oil. It indicates that America is aiming for global leadership, uh, both military and economically. And what it says, I think, is chilling. It says if we are going to transform America into tomorrow's dominant force, that's their phrase, then it's going to be a long process unless there is a catastrophic and catalyzing event, dash like Pearl Harbor. I was about five blocks away when that, I heard uh, explosions, three thuds and turn around to see the building we just got out of, antenna tip over and fall in on itself. And then all of a sudden it started like, like it sounded like gunfire, you know, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. As we were getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway, there was a uh, heavy duty explosion. New York's bravest never had a chance. We really never even got the, uh, that close to the building. The explosion blew and it knocked everybody over. Trade Center and then all of a sudden I heard rumbling and we all started running away from it. The glass like blew out and threw me onto the sidewalk and I, I couldn't see for like 20 seconds. And then I started seeing vaguely the street and I, I just started walking and I started, my eyesight came back. I see you're, you're bloody, you have dust all over you. Yeah, it was bad. It was like a dust storm or something, like I couldn't see anything. And you can see that it almost looks like one of those almost looks like one of those planned implosions 